Hey everyone, and welcome to the VitaCast, episode 84. I'm your host, Tyler Oltoff, and with me as usual, it's Kyle Wakeling. What's up, Kyle? Ah, not too much, shall we? You know, yeah. the usual kind of stuff. That's, <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I've got bad news for you. Bad news? Oh no. Yep. Uh, I have to break a VitaCast tradition. What? Why? Well... I'm no longer recording the podcast pantless ever again. Did your girlfriend glue your pants to you? No, Tyler? no. Now before you, <laughs> now before everyone starts crying, there's reasons. <laughs> so my little brother finally moved out of my parents' house. So congratulations to him on moving out for the first time. <laughs> um, but anyways, I took over what used to actually be my room and. It's so much bigger and more it's more roomy. So I actually have a desk now and I can have my computer set up to be, actually have a decent looking workstation and I can actually see everything. So I'm sitting in a chair for once instead of laying in my bed. So <laughs> pants are on and it feels good. That's good to know. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't always take my pants off, Kyle. If you really get, like, if you're feeling like it's not the same, just let me know and I'll pull those pants right off for you. No, it's good. We're you good. sure? I mean, Everyone's they're good? already coming yes, off. Yes, we're all good. Uh, no, we're all good. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> emailed me just now and we're all good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Besides the fact this isn't live, Kyle, you can't do that. How do you know it isn't live? How do you know I'm not streaming on this side, Tyler? You don't know. I don't right. know. You could be doing something <laughs> like that. But anyways, let, okay, yeah, just letting you know, pants are on now, so new room, hopefully better quality than what we're doing. <laughs> For some reason, I thought you were going to be like, yeah, so like this room I'm in now is like right next to a huge glass window, <laughs> I thought the neighbor was going to creep on me or something <laughs> like that. No, nothing like That's that. That's the kind of story I was expecting, not some like, oh, now I'm sitting at a desk so I have to wear pants kind of bullshit. Well, I felt like people needed to know that the pants are now on. So now we're all in the loop. And, and we're all hopefully wearing pants. Eh, people can do what they want, Kyle, when they listen to our beautiful voices. <laughs> I don't know, Tyler. Hey, I as think, long as I they think don't... it just got a little awkward in here. Yeah, yeah, let's move it along. We're a, we're a PlayStation Vita cast. We don't try to talk about nudity but we do every once in a while but anyways <laughs> the playstation vita has some nudity on it <laughs> yeah well, let's talk about the vita kyle let's talk about those games what have you played well uh not not a whole lot um really my time has been compressed with trying to work with this piece of shit laptop so Wah. i don't get as much vita time as i should yeah but anywho um, I have been playing some stuff. Um, my addiction with Tetris is still ongoing, so you know I, I've been playing that a bit. Um, just chugging for those trophies. I still only have two trophies, and it feels like I've been playing this game for a long time. So, huh? I don't Interesting. Know. <laughs> some of them must be a real grind, or like really hard to get. I don't know. I haven't really paid too much attention, other than I wanted to make sure I got one, so I picked out like an easy. <laughs> other people had had <laughs> yeah. um but yeah so I, I don't know um also been playing some stuff that i'm just trying to either raise the trophy level or get a little farther in the story in and that's uh senric you're bon appetit trying to get those trophies and i'm playing uh akiba's trip um trying to get some of the alternate storylines done and collect some of those trophies as well nice so, yeah, that's what I played on Vita. What about you, Tyler? Well, I am still pushing through that stupid real fishing game. God, I hate that game. <laughs> and, yeah, that game is just... Anyways, I'm almost done with it, but not yet. Uh, <laughs> so I took a break from that because it was just making me so frustrated. And I played a couple more games, because literally that's all I've been playing is that fishing game lately to try to get it done, but God. Anyways, I played a game of MLB uh, 15, the show. I played this game called Squares, which isn't out yet. Um, it's coming out, I believe, next week, which is the 21st. I think that's its release date. Um, but basically, you 
tap squares quickly. And if you don't do it in time, you don't pass the level. It's really simple, but really difficult because it doesn't give you much time at all. Like it's literally like three seconds or something and you have to think pretty quickly which ones you have to tap, which ones you can't tap. Uh, some of the um, touch gestures are different. So instead of tapping, you have to slide it a certain direction. Some of them you have to double tap. So it's very interesting, not too far in the game, but if you like brain teaser type things and things that make you think really quickly, then you should enjoy this game. So yeah, next week that comes out. Um, I also played a little bit of J Stars Victory versus Plus. Not very much, just did like one fight and that was it. <laughs> I need to play more of that game because I was really excited for that game and I've just been so busy. Um, but yeah, I also re-downloaded uh, Virtue's Last Reward. I think I mentioned that last week and I played a little bit of that and I'm already stuck on the very first puzzle. So, yay! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I didn't play much more after that because I got frustrated on trying to think really hard and I could not figure it out for the life of me. So I'm sure it's something very simple and I'm just missing it. So... I'll jump back into that later. Um, I also played a little bit of R No Surge Plus. Uh, also, not very much, just a little bit. Did a couple fights and progressed the story just a little bit. And last but not least, I played a little bit of Minecraft. And Kyle actually did a video with me, not playing Minecraft. He'll be doing that later, don't you worry. <sighs> <laughs> but, uh,. He, me and him did a, a Minecraft chat video, which I've done on my channel, or started doing on my YouTube channel. Basically talked about um, Bandai Namco's support for the Vita and the struggle of getting the Vita word out there and whatnot. So if you want to check that out, you should head to my channel and go watch that video. Kyle and I had an interesting conversation while I tried to focus on Minecraft. It was <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, basically, I talked a lot, and Tyler was, like, introducing topics while I, like, talked about them. <laughs> yes, it was the perfect plan. I didn't have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when are you joining again, Kyle? Uh, whenever you want, I guess, Tyler. I gotta as long as I don't have to play yet. <laughs> oh, one of these days. Soon. I know, I know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's about all I played. So, let's jump into the reviews from this week, Kyle. What do we got? All right, so only one review from this week, and that's Arno Surge Plus, Ode to an Unborn Star, which was reviewed by Adrian, and he gave it a 4.1 out of 5. And he says, quote, Arno Surge Plus, Ode to an Unborn Star, is a fantastic game that blends in heavy storytelling with a character development system that will let you go as deep as you want. Minor flaws aside, many JRPG fans will enjoy this game, end quote. So... Looks like some pretty high praise there and an over four score and you know. You you said you played it, I haven't, so you say whether you agree with that or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am extremely early in this game, so uh Yeah, it's it's fun so far. The the combat system is extremely weird though, so it's taking some getting used to. Um but yeah. Its story has me somewhat interested. It's not like those, whatchamacallit, those hyper-dimension games where they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and then like an hour later you finally actually start playing the game. They seem to do a lot of chatting while playing kind of thing, so I enjoyed that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I'm very early in the game. I think I've only played like 45 minutes to an hour maybe, so... Definitely can't say too much about it, but I'm enjoying it so far, so I'll definitely play more of it when I get the time, which is very hard to come by with all these games that are coming out. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to play more of it soon. Um, but yeah, speaking of games coming out, we're going to jump into the new releases because that was our only review from the week. So first up, for North America, we are getting Deception for the Nightmare Princess, which is going to be thirty nine ninety nine. Kyle, what are we getting in Europe? All right. Well, we're also getting Deception for the Nightmare Princess. What are the odds? It's out on 17th of July, though, and it's not available in Bahrain, Kuwait, Lebanon, New Zealand, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, or the United Arab Emirates. And it's coming out at 29 dollars British pounds, 
39.99 euros and 49.95 Australian dollars. So there you have it. All right. Now we get the fun part, Kyle. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of news this week, although I've tried to condense it as much as possible. So hopefully, you know, <laughs> we don't bore these people too much. Yeah, well, buckle your seatbelts, people. The Vita's dead, and we've got an hour worth of news to read, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can do it quicker than that. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to be very quick, but at, at the same time. Accurate. <laughs> yeah, and understandable. So let's get right into it. First up, Telltale Games CEO and co-founder Kevin Bruner had this to say about the studio's upcoming title, Minecraft Story Mode, at Minecon this week. Quote, We've worked closely with the amazing team at Mojang to ensure this story is a natural fit for the Minecraft world fans already know and love. As Jesse, players will steer their own path through a tale of adventure and survival, all brought to life by an all-star cast. Through Telltale's choice-based gameplay and a story spanning from the nether to the far lands, the end, and beyond, we can't wait for fans to experience this new take on the beloved world of Minecraft. End quote. Minecraft Story Mode All-Star cast features the following actors, Patton Oswalt, Brian Pazin, Ashley Johnson, Scott Porter, Martha Plimpton, Dave Fenoy, Corey Feldman, Billy West, and Paul Rubens. Mojang has assured diehard man Minecraft fans that the story will be a natural fit in the world of Minecraft, so you'll want to be on the lookout if you're a fan. As for a release date, we're still pretty much in the dark on this one, especially since for Telltale, Vita means last. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Next up, a post this week on the PlayStation blog has announced that musical shooter Myrid will be making its debut on the PlayStation Vita. According to Bitfrost Entertainment, Myrid is a twin-stick shooter that aims for one thing, performance. That's right, Myrid will not contain any story, lore, or character development. Its goal is to be a fun shooter where its world will be shaped by your performance. The gameplay of Myrid involves destroying the level you have built by defeating enemies. Sounds like any normal shooter, right? Wrong. <laughs> the difference is that with every enemy that you defeat, many more will spawn after it. This is where you must build upon or build up special combos to wipe everything off the screen, and only then will you be victorious. In addition, there is no game over. In this game, you are in control of time and space, therefore you have the power to rewind time to fix your mistake. Does Myrid sound like a game that's up your alley? While it has been announced, there is still no time frame for the release. Next up, Bandai Namco and Experience's upcoming PlayStation Vita dungeon crawler Ray Gigant will see you taking on giant monsters that are hell-bent on destroying the world. What's more, you will be able to fight these monsters and will take them on using powerful attacks and some epic transformations. The battle system in Ray Gigant will allow for you to use up to five commands per turn. If, however... Uh, you decide to use SP points to utilize the game's SBM or slash beat mode, then you will be given the chance to multiply the commands you can use per turn by several dozens, meaning that you will be able to deal a massive amount of damage to the enemy that you are facing. Once you activate SBM, you will notice that Ragegon's interface will completely change, with you now having to input commands in a way that is more familiar in rhythm games. If you manage to hit all the notes right, you can perform over 100 hits with the slash beat mode. There's also another function of this SBM, with the game's three protagonists having the ability to unleash a special transformation that is called Apothesis. This transformation is done via the SBM, and will see the characters enter a god mode that drastically alters their appearance and behavior. Once this power is activated, the protagonists lose their human abilities, such as reasoning, and become one with the Yorigami unleashing a powerful force that allows them to continuously pull off many super attacks. Rage Gun is set to release in Japan on July 30th, with no news yet on a Western release. All right, on with the news. Helldivers is at it once again. The game that has you saving Super Earth from the alien menace has yet another update that brings loads of new features as well as bug fixes. And once again, with the new update, the game has received a new name. Helldivers Turning Up the Heat is now Helldivers Masters of the Galaxy, following the 3.0 update. The new game expansion is free and available right now, with the biggest change being the addition of new enemy masters, the baddest of the bad that the alien hordes will throw at you. 
Only skilled hell divers armed with are armed to the teeth will be able to take down these new giants. Along with a free expansion, there are also a number of new DLC packs available for sale featuring new weapons and uniforms, so check out the store for new add-ons. Anyways, speaking of the update, the full list of changes includes added features. A new threat to the security of Super Earth has emerged. Enemy master units have been located and can now be attacked in each region. Before you begin your assault, you need to gather influence in the region and at least be rank 12. Once you have gathered enough influence and started the assault, you have three hours to defeat the enemy master before the opportunity is lost. Also added is a new control method for tracked vehicles. More info can be found at the encyclopedia. As for what else they did, they fixed some bugs, they fixed a crash with cloud saves, and fixed an issue with unkillable illuminate units, and they also changed an element. Uh, they changed how the death or the low death count works. Your team can now die as many times as difficulty of the mission and still receive the low death bonus. All this content doesn't come easy, however, and the download for the update is quite sizable. The 3.0 update is as big as Behemoth as the enemy masters you'll be fighting and comes in at 1.8 gigabytes in size. So get downloading and get out there to spread liberty and democracy across the galaxy. Moving on. Crows is an anime series that reached its 25th anniversary, and in celebration, the series is about to receive a game to mark this momentous occasion. According to Famitsu, the game will take place at the notorious Suzuran All Boys High School, where Harumichi Buya is a recent transfer student. Harumichi is the kind of person who is devoted to fighting fairly, but it seems that the other boys of the school aren't as gracious. The game will follow the original story of the anime and show the drama that unfolds in it with the player taking control of Harujini. Wow, that name changed there. Harujini, Harumichi. Anywho, <laughs> the game will only feature the thugs and delinquents from Suzuran High, however. Groups and gangs from Huzen Academy, the Kurotaki Alliance, and the Front of Armament will showcase their fighting abilities as well. Crow's Burning Edge has no solid release date yet, but as with all new beta news, we'll keep you informed. NIS has revealed in this week's Famitsu that Japanese mobile game Hero Death will be getting a Vita remake next year as Hero Must Die. The RPG remake originally released in 2007 and features a hero that defeats the last boss, a demon lord, but dies at the same time. However, he's given five days to live by God, where the story takes off. The hero grows progressively weaker, and depending on the player's actions, different characters will show up to his funeral at the game's end. The remake will feature some new additions to the RPG. They will include new scenarios with every heroine, including two new heroines, a music arrangement with new music by Kenji Ito, and a voiced main character. Along with the hero and demon lord, the game will feature Princess Flora and Yuria the Angel as characters. Hero Must Die will release on PlayStation Vita in Japan on February 25th and will cost 5,980 yen at retail and 4,762 yen digitally. Alright, next up, in Dun or Dragon Quest Builders, players will ta be tasked with rebuilding the world of Alfgard, Alfgard, the land where the first Dragon Quest title takes place, after it has been destroyed by the Dragon King. This is where the Minecraft similarities come into play, as you will rebuild this world by collecting blocks and assembling structures out of them, with no restrictions bar your own imagination. Dragon Quest Builders has been given the description of a block-making RPG, so we may find that this game has more of a pre prevalent story than Minecraft does. With no n news yet of a Western release, here's hoping that Square Enix to do decide to localize this title as it sure does appeal to some of the Vita fans out there. Next up, in the land of No Night, Yo Yoru No... Uh, okay. <laughs> Yoru No <laughs> Nai Kuni... I'm definitely going to just keep saying the English way to say that. Anyways, Land of No Night, protagonist Arnoth can bust out different weapons by using her own blood or use the blood of her enemies to transform into different modes. Here we get to take a look into some of the transformations and weapons that Arnoth will be able to utilize when the game releases later this summer in Japan. The dagger weapon that Arnoth wields allows you to pull 
off quick attacks that can combine to produce multiple hits, leaving little room for your opponent to counter. This dagger also provides your subordinate demons, known as servants, with an ability called Bleed Hit, which leaves a bleeding effect on the target. There's also a long sword that will offer you range and reach. This sword can suck the blood of enemies that you defeat, which will add to your overall power. The more blood that you suck with this weapon will directly increase the power of your attack. You can put these weapons to use in the game's arena, which will be found at the end hotel. This arena is where you will be able to... What? Well, yeah. This arena is where you will go to participate in battles that will have certain criteria that you must achieve to emerge victorious. These requir requirements can range from being limited to certain moves or having a time limit in which you must obtain your goal. These arena battles are a great way to earn special rewards, some of which are unique to this area. Transformations in Land of No Night can be performed by chaining attacks together and building up Arnoth's transformation gauge. Once this bar is full, you will be able to transform and obtain powers from the servants. The transformations in the game will vary depending on which servants you have in your party. The aforementioned rabbit form is a close-range hand-to-hand combat specialist, providing Arnoth with an edge due to its speed and light body that allows her to take out groups of the game's Joyo monsters with ease. If you want to ensure that you get the first hit in battle, then the rabbit form is definitely the go-to transformation. You'll be able to run circles around enemies with this form, and if that's, that is not enough, your servants will receive a mobility boost too. The rabbit form has an array of flashy beast-like moves that are unique to the transformation. There's also a demon form, which will grant you the power of fire. This form will allow you for you to attack enemies with from both close range and long range. Whilst the width of the demon's forms, demon form's attack is easily its best characteristic, as it provides extremely useful. It provides extremely useful when you are surrounded by enemies. Land of No Night is set to release in Japan on August 27th, so be sure to keep an eye on the Vita Lounge to get all the news on this game between now and its release. Next, you'll want to watch out for this. Last week, we brought you the news that Axis Games were working on the third installment of the Zero Escape series, and most importantly, that it would be coming to PlayStation Vita. Details have been scarce since the announcement was made, but a recent listing on Amazon has confirmed that there will be a limited edition by pre-ordering by pre-ordering the game, and for a limited time only, you will receive a nifty Zero Escape wristwatch, or bracelet as the listing states. This shouldn't surprise fans of the series, as Virtue's Last Reward also had a limited edition which included a wristwatch. Wristwatch is such a difficult word to say. Zero Escape Volume 3 is due, at, due to hit PlayStation Vita in 2016. Alright, moving on. Exploring dungeons in Sheer and the Wanderer games has never been easy, but PlayStation Vita owners can now test their skill and patience with the new Sheer and the Wanderer 5 Experts Footprints Dungeon. The new addition to the title will be extremely challenging for a number of reasons. Firstly, players will not be able to bring any of their saved items with them. To make matters even more painstakingly difficult, enemies won't drop recovery items either. Well, that's a bitch. Uh, as with all the other dungeons already found in the game, when you die, all monsters change position and you sink back to level 1. All your items are lost and the whole dungeon transforms. Add those to the new additions and all of us here at TBL will have you in our thoughts. Sheer and the Wanderer 5 Plus and Expert's Footprint Dungeon are both available in Japan now. Next up, a new trailer for Spike Chunsoft's upcoming Mystery Dungeon spin-off game, Mystery Chronicle I Won't Look Back Until I Win, has given us a glimpse at the game's latest look, as well as details on a collaboration that it will feature. Mystery Chronicle's story takes place in a world that has no name, which prompted the kings of the nations from around the world to attempt to take over the world and claim it for themselves. In the end, it was King Conless who emerged victorious, and his kingdom won the nameless world. Though the kingdom of Conlon was able to bring a certain order to the world, things were not peaceful for long, as a certain incident occurred where their messenger of evil brought shock and trouble to the invincible king. The messenger carried a light of despair that it continues to spread across the world, swallowing all forms of life. With this light of despair on the verge of reaching King Conless and his child, something must be done to stop it. 
The only way that this can happen is if the fallen angel Alma can be defeated with the king's son, the only person who can stop her, with a little help from some friends. The game will start when you have decided on a name for the world that King Conlis has won, and the name will also decide the structure of the world. Your world can be shared with others by having them enter the same name, but the only way to emerge victorious in the game is to escape from the light of despair in a forced side-scroller RPG fashion. Mystery Chronicle I Won't Look Back Until I Win will feature over 20 classes to play as, each with their own playstyles. There will be a variety of items to collect, traps to avoid, monsters to fight, and friends to be made in the game, with an online versus mode where you'll be able to take on other players. The game also allows for information to be shared via Twitter, and new content will be arriving in the game via DLC. One of the upcoming DLC packs has already been announced, and will feature a collaboration between Sharon the Wanderer and Dang and Rapa, with new classes from the titles being introduced in the game. If any characters are experts at battling despair, then it is surely those from the Dang and Rapa series. Set to release in Japan on July 30th, keep an eye on the Vita Lounge for more info on Mystery Chronicle. I will look back until I win as soon as it's made available. Samurai Warriors 4 Empires, based on Samurai Warriors 4 2, is set to add more strategic elements to the typical hack and slash gameplay that is a staple of the Samurai Warriors titles. In Samurai Warriors 4 Empires, players will be able to control military commanders in a new strategic room. The options that you will have at your disposal will change depending on which of your advisors you seek to take advice from. Koei Tecmo has announced that the roster of warlords in the game will be the same as that in Samurai Warriors 4 2, and that over 100 female commanders will feature. It has also been announced that for those who pre order the game, they will receive a bonus mission titled The Siege of Osaka. Samurai Warriors 4 Empire is set to release in Japan on September 3rd, with no news yet on a Western localization. Alright, next up, Dengenki. Den, Dengeki. Oh, wow. Alright. <coughs> Dengeki PlayStation recently revealed a few new characters that will be joining the support cast in the upcoming Tokyo, Z Tokyo Xanadu, including a homeroom teacher who is the cousin of main character Ko to Tokasaka. Toki Saka. Ah, oh, I hate you, Kyle. Tawa Koko No, voiced by Ainonoka, is the 23-year-old cousin of Ko and is in a homeroom teacher, or, and is a homeroom teacher, who is new to Mori Morimiya High School. Tawa is in charge of the second-year pupils that attend the school, as well as being a committee advisor and a grade chief counselor. Tawa is also the head of mathematics and data processing at the school. During her free time, she likes to help her grandfather out as a shrine maiden at the Kokono Shrine, while also teaching Kokono-style jujitsu at a dojo. Tawa calls her cousin Kokun, but ensure, ensures that while in school, she calls him Tokusawa-kun, although she is known to occasionally slip up and make fun of him. Tawa is also looking out for Ko and does worry about him at and the part-time work that he does. One thing that is interesting about Tawa Koken, though, is that she apparently, she apparently sh two shares, she apparently <laughs> likes to share the same face as, I don't know what they're trying to say there, but anyways, she apparently something shares the same face as Tawa Herschel from The Legend of Heroes, Trials of Cold Steel. However, Yeah, she just shares the same face. They look the exact same. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> However... As these games take place in two separate worlds, that there can no there can be no way that these two are connected. As well as being introduced by Tawa, then Geki PlayStation also introduced us to two more characters. First up, we have Sosuke Kokono, who is a 70-year-old and Tawa's grandfather. Sosuke is the priest of the Kokono Shrine, and although he has a strict air about him, he is actually quite calm and playful. Sosuke is also the head of the Kokono style jujitsu and taught this to Ko until he entered high school. It is said that the Kokono style has intermingled with the Ikushima style. Ikushima? I don't know. Anyways, that style. Since ancient times, with Sora Ikushima training in the Kokono style in times gone by. The other character that we meet goes by the name of Goro Saiki. 
Goro is 28 years old, 28 years old and is a handsome, glasses-wearing English teacher who is popular among the girls that attends Moramiya High School. At first, all the male students are jealous of Goro, but they soon learn to trust him due to his unmatched friendliness. Goro Seiki is a mountain climbing enthusiast and likes to spend his time wait, likes to spend his time off visiting historic sites. If bringing us details on these characters wasn't enough, Dengeki also has information about Tokyo Xanadu's Other Worlds Search app. This is an app which you will install on the in-game Xiphone? I, Xiphone? I don't know. Once the app is launched, it will display a percentage indicator to, in the upper left corner of the screen, which will increase as you get nearer to what is known as an Otherworld trigger site on the game's map. Once this percentage indicator reaches its max, you will find that a gate point indicator appears that will then require you to press the L trigger to open a gate to the other world. It has also been announced that when you are in the other world, you will be able to remove Ko from your party if you wish to do so. Finally, Dengeki PlayStation also explains a little more about Ko's exclusive parameters, which are wisdom, courage, and compassion. Here, we find out that each of these can be increased to a maximum of five stars. Wisdom will affect the actions that Ko takes during the game's main events as well as influencing the special items that he receives. Courage will affect the results of battles while his compassion will deepen Ko's interactions with other characters. It has been revealed that these three parameters will also affect Tokyo Xanadu's main story and its final ending. But wait, there's more! Thanks, Kyle. Speaking of Tokyo Xanadu, we've also got a ton of new details surrounding new characters. Uh, Moramiya City and the Fragments of Fate items, thanks to this week's Dengeki PlayStation and Jamatsu. First up, we have a we first up we have take a look. Oh dear lord! First up, we take a look at character Liam, a greedy and mysterious girl. We're not sure who calmly wanders. The other world. Seeming human, her actual origins and classifications are unknown, but she does appear to glow and exhibit transparent qualities. Somehow she escapes the other world and appears before the main character of Lost Memoirs, Ko. She gives him the chance to manifest his soul device and subsequently watches him from a rather short distance. Her true intentions with Ko and otherwise are not clear, however she seems to have knowledge about something called Xanadu. Next up is Tomaaki Mikuriya, a 29-year-old narcissist and son of the Mika, mm, I just said it, Mikuriya group, with the possibility of an ex executive position at Zodiac. In a, an organization the Mikuriya group belongs to, he is transferred to Morimiya City and the idea of him marrying Mis Mitsuki comes into play. Third, we have Morimaru, the official mascot of Mor Morimiya City, a Matama Uda Farmers Association advisor, and a huge SPIKA fan. Well, that's, that's the whole shebang when it comes to newly released character details. That's not all we've learned, as we now have some information and screenshots regarding some of the locations in Tokyo Xanadu. The Station Square area is a vast public space connected to Moramiya Station and located in the center of Moramiya City. Being that it's so central to the city and located so close to a transportation and shopping hub, it seems to be filled with people regardless of the time of day or week you look. The transport facilities gathered in the Station Square area include the Tama Monorail, the bus stop, and the railroad, while shopping areas of interest include big-name retailers Star Camera and Orion Library. Other notable features of the square include a giant arc-shaped monument, which acts as a meeting spot, and the well-known symbol at the center. Star Camera is a nationwide retailer of electronics and media. They carry items such as CDs, games, and Xiphones from makers like the Hokuta Group and Amano Works. The Mor Ma oh, geez. the Morimaya <laughs> Shopping District is a community-based shopping area that gives off a traditional feel due to the antique arcway that adorns it, and among other details. Here you'll find a number of small shops linked 
together to provide all of life's necessities, including two grocers, one on each side of the main street, a butcher, a hardware and smith shop, a sports supply store, and more. Ko's friend Ryota's family runs the Ibuki Fruits and Vegetable Shop there as well. Lastly, we've got some news regarding the game's Fragments of Fate items, which you obtain through playing the game's story and exploring the city. These items will enable you to see character-specific Kazuna episodes, which are available not only to main characters, but supporting characters such as Shirio, Ryota, or Tawa as well. These Kizuno episodes along also come with a bonus, increasing the soul level of a main character who unlocks and watches them, or awarding rare items and other bonuses if unlocked and viewed by a supporting character. Tokyo Zendu is due out in Japan on September 30th, with no news yet on a Western localization. That was a lot of Japanese words. I probably slaughtered every single one. You of love them. me, right? You love me. Yeah. Was <laughs> I close on any of them, Kyle? Some. <laughs> ah, well, I'm learning. Or getting worse. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> let's continue on. Gal Gunvolt will be releasing later this year on PlayStation Vita. Empty Creates have revealed bringing with it a host of new features and guest characters. First of all, the game will release in Japan on August 6th and will be a digital-only title. And secondly, the game will host guest appearances from both the upcoming Mighty No. 9 and Mighty Gunvolt. The game will host nine different stages, each with their own boss characters. Gal Gunvolt sounds rather exciting and will keep you informed that that release date gets more specific. All right, back to me and Tyler gets a break. Yep. The official website for Elias Carnival on Vita has just gone up, and thanks to this, we've gained a bit of information on the upcoming visual novel, Port. Elias Carnival takes place in an area known as the Sukuma Ward, known for its Sakura cherry blossom trees. In an attempt to redevelop the ward, the local government have begun an experiment where they get students to participate in the construction of Sakumodai Gakuin in the name of a better student life. Mm -hmm. Students who put in more effort are rewarded with the most helpful students getting an extra special privilege. Protagonist Ren Saiju returns to the Sakuma ward after being away for a while, transferring back into the school as well. Once again reunited with his shy sister and his childhood friend, who has now grown into a young lady, he attempts to resume a normal life and fails. On his first day of school, he gets himself into trouble, but also ends up saving a girl. This girl he saves then invites him into the club she belongs to, one that aims to change the school for the better. Featuring new scenarios, fresh visuals, touch controls, and completely new characters by the original staff, Elias Carnival Sacrament is set to release in October 29th in Japan. This will be available for 6,900 yen plus tax in physical form and 5,900 yen plus tax for the digital version. Moving on. Brace Yourself Games have announced that they're bringing roguelike rhythm game Crypt of the Necrodancer to PlayStation Vita. Heather Wilson, producer and community manager at Brace Yourself Games, took to the PlayStation blog recently to announce that they're bringing their critically acclaimed roguelike rhythm title to the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4 in their console debut. Originally released on PC, Crypt of the Necrodancer sees you play as Cadence, a cursed girl on a quest through the Necrodancer's mysterious dungeon in search of her missing father. On her journey, she faces methodical monsters, all moving rhythmically to the same beat she's been cursed to follow, and randomly generated levels, offering new gameplay every time, complicating her search even farther. It's not all about Cadence, however, as you can even play as other members of Cadence's family, each with their own unique playstyle. Featuring an award-winning soundtrack composed by Danny Baranowski and a special console-only chiptune remix from Jake Vert Kaufman, the composer for Shovel Knight, Crypt of the Necrodancer is definitely headed to Vita in style. Now, if only we had a release date. Indie studio Quattro Gear has announced it is bringing its gothic-themed action RPG Black Witchcraft to the PlayStation Vita. With a heavy gothic theme, Black Witchcraft lets you play as one of three different witches, each with unique abilities such as weapon transformation. The action will never be dull. Fans of games like Dragon's Crown will feel right at home with its side-scrolling beat-em-up action. As with many action RPGs, you can pick up materials, gain XP, and gain new familiars. Familiars are summons that have different abilities such as an attack, recovery, or defense move. 
Each character can equip four familiars at a time that can help you when summoned, and Quattro Gear has released a teaser trailer that shows a familiar in action and can be seen on the site. Black Witchcraft is slated for a 2015 release on the Vita, so keep an eye on you know where. New details on Square Enix's upcoming building RPG D Dragon Quest Builders has been revealed in this week's Jump Magazine. Details on the story, characters, and gameplay were all commented on by creators, series creator Yuji Hori. In the past, there was a constant struggle between monsters and he humans. However, humans had a hero who they relied upon and was the central figure. He fell into the Dragon Lord's trap, though, and was never heard from again. Without the hero, the humans fell into disarray and were driven from their land as their numbers drastically decreased. Jump forward, and a boy or girl is born into the world of Alephgard as, and has the special ability items from all things in this world ruled by the Dragon Lord. This is the main character and who the player controls. The world would the world would be empty when the game when starting the game, but with the new hero's abilities, you are tasked with building villages, castles, and items by collecting materials in the world. This isn't the only form of gameplay, however, you can also engage monsters in combat. In Jump, Hori had this to say about his new game. Quote, Dragon Quest Builders is a completely new block making RPG where players must recapture and restore the land of Alephgard after it's destroyed by the Dragon Lord. The vast world of Alephgard is expressed through blocks, which players can freely create, destroy, and remodel as if they're in a sandbox or playing with building blocks. Please try to create an innovative Alephgard. End quote. Dragon Quest Builders has a Japanese release window set for winter 2015. Multimedia artist Bayun, Bayun of Pixel Junk Eden and Pixel Junk 4AM fame and Pygmy Studio who ported La Mulana to Vita have announced today that they will be bringing their new title Muse Together is the New Alone to PlayStation Vita and PS4 sometime in the future. Quote, a young girl lays in a never-ending slumber. One day a boy finds notes, finds notes and paintings belonging to the sleeping girl. Guided by these tokens, he sets off on an adventure in hopes of awakening her once again, end quote. This is the premise of the title, for which it centered around the theme of unrequited love. Featuring a unique art style, a blend of pixel art and watercolor paintings, combined with a mel melancholic electronic soundtrack and some Japanese adventure game inspiration, you'll have a mind-bendingly good time finding new environments, solving colorful puzzles, and meeting the unique creatures contained within. Are you ready to go on a crazy adventure? No release date has been announced for Muse. Together is the new alone, but we'll be sure to update you as this one develops further. Another week, another news story about another hyperdimension Neptunia game. This time, we have the crossover game Hyperdimension Neptunia vs. Sega Hard Girls, and a whole host of story details have been revealed for the game. The game will have you play as IF, and will see you exploring space with a new character named Sega Hatsumi. As they embark on what is being described as an epic adventure, check out the official story details as revealed in this week's issue of Dengeki PlayStation. A grand library that governs all of this world's history. If the history books stored there are tampered with, it is said that it is possible to rewrite, rewrite actual history. IF, with a certain goal in mind and after a long journey, finally sets foot within the grand li library. However, within that library, an incident occurs and the history books begin to disappear one after the other. The disappearance of the history books means a loss of real history. Before her eyes, history is being lost, and then the world. To resolve this incident, IF must journey across space and time on a new adventure. Characters IF, the game's protagonist, she's an adventurer who travels around the world with her trusty motorcycle, just trying to find a bit of fun in a brighter future in a modern age where civilization has fallen. She's diligent, cool, and level-headed, as well as the group peacemaker, but her only flaw is that she suffers a little bit from... Chunibu syndrome? I don't know what that is. Anyways, Sega Hatsumi, an unidentifiable girl who lost her memory. She goes by Sagami or Segamin, although she doesn't remember anything about outside her own name. For some reason, she knows an uncommon ten tenacity. Tenacity, oh Jesus, tenacity in changing the history of the conflict between the goddesses and Sega Hard Girls. 
Although she has the spirit of a leader and a charismatic, and is charismatic, she occasionally doesn't listen to others when they talk and bewilders her friends with ideas out of left field. That's all for now regarding this strange crossover, but keep an eye out for more as this one develops further. Wow, Tyler, all those Japanese names making you screw up the English words. Always, it happens. <laughs> Gotta love that. Gotta love that. <laughs> Anywho, continuing on with the news, TT Games and Marvel have revealed details about what we can expect from their upcoming PlayStation Vita title, Lego Marvel's Avengers. Speaking at San Diego Comic Con, game director Alan Parsons has stated that the game will draw upon the first Avengers film, Age of Ultron, and more. The successor to Lego Marvel Superheroes is also set to feature an expanded cast with over 100 new superheroes and villains, with a new Avenger being thrown into the mix in the shape of Iron Stan, the Marvel magnate himself, Stan Lee. Parsons continued to say that the game is a celebration of everything Avengers, comic books, movies, cartoons, it's everything you love about the Avengers in video games. Lego Marvel's Avengers will feature the usual suspects, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, Vision, and Quicksilver, but it will also add some other fan favorites such as Sam Wilson as Captain America, Wiccan from Young Avengers, Crossbones, America Chavez from A-Force, and Detroit Steel. As mentioned above, Stanley's appearance as Iron Stan will see Tony Stark's suit modified to become a mustachioed suit of armor including its very own version of the Hulkbuster in the form of the Stan Buster. Be prepared for the Avengers to assemble this winter when LEGO Marvel's Avengers is set to release on PlayStation Vita. A stretch goal for regalia of Sons and Monarchs has been reached, meaning the hand-drawn Japanese-expired RPG is heading to Vita. We brought you news of the Kickstarter last month, but for the uninitiated, here's some details. Regalia is a game about restoring your family's kingdom to its former glory. You are given two years of in-game time to do so, and the game features turn-based battles, factions, city building and upgrading, and NPC conversations that unlock features. The Kickstarter campaign is closed, but the campaign raised over $90,000 and has helped to secure the following milestones. Motion capture character animations, animated character portraits, PS4 and Vita versions, English voice acting, additional content for the game, and a fully orchestral soundtrack. If you pledge 25 or more to the Kickstarter when it was open, you'll get a digital copy of the game when it launches in 2016. Moving on. Thanks to a leaked banner on Amazon Japan's Vita page, we now know that Criminal Girls 2 is in development and will be launching on November 26. Now that the cat's out of the bag, however, Nibonichi Software has come forward and officially announced Criminal Girls 2 for the PlayStation Vita. According to Digengeki Online, the punishment and battle system will remain the same, but there will be changes to the strategy and hints that the punishment will be more extreme. Along with the confirmation, it has been confirmed that a new cast of girls will join the fray. Criminal Girls 2 will be releasing in Japan on November 26th, and there is no word yet on a western release. It is notable however that this game is actually the first Criminal Girls made from the ground up for the Vita as the first game is a port of the PSP version. Well, Alright, next up 17-bit have revealed via Twitter that they will be ceasing development on Galaxy for PlayStation Vita. Wah, wah. Originally announced at Sony's pre-E3 press conference in 2013 and described as modern Halo and Far Cry 3 combat in a two-dimensional shell by CEO Zach Gazdale, it's been a long time coming for Galaxy, the dimen dimensional on Vita, which makes this news a little bit of a downer to those in wait. Galaxy for PlayStation Vita has been put on ice by 17-bit, their explanatory... Oh my gosh. Explanation getting the tweet treatment last night. Quote, Vita faithful, heartbreaking technical limitations force us to put Galaxy Vita on ice. Can't compromise, can't compromise beautiful and responsive gameplay, end quote. Yet another Vita title which has been canned due to not wanting to compromise on the PlayStation 4 version of the game to achieve parity, a trend that's becoming a bit too common if you ask us. 
Hot on the heels of Cyber Slew getting announced for the West, we learn a new Digimon game, and this one's heading to Vita 2. According to a scan from this week's V Jump magazine, thanks Shonen Games, we've now learned that Digimon World Next Order is coming to Japan in 2016, appearing to have an open world component alongside character designs by the artist behind Lords of Vermilion 3. Not much else has been revealed yet, as it usually is the case with scan-based reveals, but we'll be sure to keep an eye out for any likely imminent news on Next Order and keep you informed when it drops. Next up, we've got some release date news. Are you a fan of the World Trigger anime series? Well, good news, World Trigger Borderless Mission will be making its way to Vita, Vita's Japan in the very near future. The game will feature 80 missions, which can be played either solo or by ad hoc or online co-op, and 23 playable characters, all of whom will be voice acted. World Trigger Borderless Mission is slated for a September 17th release in Japan. Home stretch, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Last couple here. 5PB has revealed a release date for their upcoming release of Steins Gate Zero in Japan. A sequel to the original Steins Gate, this one takes the role of an alternate universe where things are not quite as they should be. Ogarin having failed to save her and the timeline of events diverging into a new path which has never before been experienced. Steins Gate Zero will release in Japan on November 19th. Next up, Axis Games recently got Lost Memories through the ESRB with a mature rating, and as such have dropped a new trailer to show it off with a date attached. Rated M for Mature, this game is said to contain blood, partial nudity, strong language, suggestive themes, and violence, also known as everything a red-blooded male from planet Earth could ask for. x Blaze Lost Memories hits North America August 11th, don't forget. And the last piece of news. Devolver Digital has announced that the pigeon dating sim Hatoful Boyfriend will arrive July 21st in both North America and Europe. The Vita version includes everything the original PC visual novel had, but will also include some additional content, such as a new romance option with Tori, a character that was only in the sequel before. Hatoful Boyfriend also features all new scenario and ending in this version for players to discover and experience, making this title even making this a title even past players might want to grab. The game features a human who is chosen to be the own non-avian student at a prestigious St. Pigeonations Institute, a school for talented birds. The player will attend classes and roam the halls searching for love with, yes you guessed it, birds of every kind at St. Pigeonations Institute. Players can attend elective classes that raise certain stats, which help to attract different bird suitors. However, not everything is what it seems at the Institute. Players will uncover conspiracies, unforeseen twists, and hellish fiends looking to usher in the apocalypse. You must choose your dates carefully, or you may end up murdered in your bed. And that's the news. Oh, man. We did it. We did, and we did it under an hour, too, Tyler. Oh, my God. <laughs> we, we plucked right through that news. That's right, we did. But... As usual, after the news comes talking points, and we move to an announced release games we're looking forward to from the week. So, what looks good, Tyler? Well, Hatful Boyfriend looks interesting, <laughs> and I'm still unsure if I'm actually gonna enjoy it. But hey, you never know. Um, I really want. Tokyo Xanadu to finally be announced over here. That'd be awesome if it actually came over. Um, also, Zero Escape Volume 3. Pretty excited to see what's that, what that's all about. Um, what else? Digimon World Next Order. I'm excited for the first one. And if the first one I enjoy, then I'm going to be very excited for this next one. And hopefully that also would get brought over here. Especially if the first one does well over in the West. Um, Dragon Quest Builders, I, I enjoy Minecraft, so something that gives more of a story and maybe a better fighting mechanic is definitely going to be interesting to me, so I'll keep my eye out on that, and hopefully that also gets brought over to the West. Um, that's all I can think of right now, I'm sure there's something, something's hiding here. Oh, 
Well, I just found like three. Regalia of S Sons and Monarchs. I'm I'm ready for that. That looks very interesting. Also, Lego Marvel Avengers. I love Lego games when they are made correctly, so I'm all about that. Um, also, Steins Gate Zero. That's kind of similar to the Digimon game. i got to play the first one and hope that those are good, and then I'll be excited for the sequels. So Steins Gate Zero will be on my list if I enjoy the first one. So, yeah. That's, I've got a lot of games to play, Kyle. Damn it. <laughs> so Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Kyle? Well, a lot of those sounded good to me, although some of them I'm kind of iffy about. And you know me, I like to kind of wait until we see what's going on. Right. Um, but the main ones that stand out for me in this week's list, anyway, are Tokyo Xanadu. I want to see that localized so bad. Um, I'm interested in Rage of God. I think if they localized that, I'd probably try it as well. Um, Steins Gate Zero, as you said, you know, we're waiting for that first one, and then probably the second one, too. <laughs> <laughs> um... Also, um, oh, uh, Digimon World Next Order, again, one of those things. Um, and, um, there's another one. Oh, Zero Escape Volume 3. I still have to play the second one, but at the same time, people keep saying play 999 first, and I gotta figure out a way to do that, so. Yeah, I was looking up, I have a, a 3DS, so I mean, I could buy the DS one, but I'm just like, meh. <laughs> I might just watch a Let's Play or something of it. <laughs> I never do that, but I might just do that. Yeah, that'd actually probably be a cheaper way. <laughs> hmm. Indeed. We'll make it a, a, a date, Kyle. We'll watch it together. <laughs> <laughs> no? Got awkward? I don't know, Tyler. <laughs> I'll, I'll wear my pants. Put two pairs on and maybe I'll think about it. <laughs> Yeah, put put a pair on your head too. No, they're all <laughs> on my head. Three pairs. I'll still be wearing pants. Anywho, continuing on, um, our next talking point this week is XCOM Enemy Unknown Plus spotted on Korean ratings board. Did you read that article, Tyler? No, but I already kind of knew about all of this, so yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, I hope it's true. Because that game looks very interesting and fun to play. So I'm all about that on the Vita. Yeah, it seems like it's one that pe a lot of people are talking about and they're saying, you know, I hope it's true and like all this stuff. And of course, with these rating board things, you never really know because it could be a mistake. It could be, you know, any sort of, you know, different thing. They're planning it, but they don't know if they can make it there, you know, whatever. So that's why they haven't announced it or whatever. So really don't have a big clue what's going on other than it's more possible that it's real than if we didn't see something like this, I guess. Right? <laughs> right. But hey, more games means more money for Tyler to spend. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler to go in the poorhouse. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, maybe you should read the next talking point, Tyler. All right, well, the next talking point we've got is... Uh, Cross Riveria, the trial of Nightmare, could come to Vita. So, Kyle, what is this? All right. So, basically, what this is is now we've moved a lot of our Kickstarter things out of our, you know, normal whatever. And I thought it'd be better to maybe talk about them a little. So, uh, Cross Reverie um, is a game which is a JRPG. Um, it's inspired by. Um, or it's a JRPG inspired game, sorry, um, whereby the story surfaces around the characters you play as, exploring their existence and their meaning in the world. So there's eight different characters that will be playable in total, and your choices will be either shape them or kill them. Um, there, there's actually a trailer on the site, uh, and I believe they're, they're needing about 60,000 Canadian dollars to reach their, their first goal. And they're asking for seventy five thousand for Vita, so it's Canadian dollars. It's cheaper than American, and uh, they're not asking for a whole bunch more for Vita. So I, I thought that was nice. Like even if you can't include it in the base school, to have it so close there, um, it, it's good treat for us. I think. Yeah, it looks very interesting, and if it came to Vita, it would definitely jump on my list of games I want. 
Yeah, just looking at the screenshots here, it definitely looks like something different but familiar at the same time. So it's, yeah. you know, that's kind of what you want in a game. <laughs> yeah, so definitely go check out that news post and support them if it grabs your attention. I might actually have to support them, but normally I kind of hold back until it gets closer to that Vita goal, but I might jump in now and see what happens. Well, it's so close, right? Like if it hits the first one, it's probably going to hit the second one. Wait, not a hundred percent, but probably. <laughs> yeah. It's not at the PS4 one yet, right? Uh, I don't know what is the PS4 goal. I have no idea. So you look at us being terrible at this. <laughs> I, I don't really care about any console, oh, wait, Vita, so mind. it doesn't matter. <laughs> they're, the, they're the same. Oh, well, there you go. Were, I thought they were separated. I don't know. No, no, no. That. The base goal is sixty thousand, and that I think that's that's supposed to be the next one. So yeah, Vita yeah. first. The base goal is sixty, and then you got seventy five. Yeah, we just mentioned that, anyways. <laughs> look at me paying yeah. attention. <laughs> so yeah, definitely check that out. Yeah. All right, let's jump into the listener mail, Kyle. What do we got? Let's All read right. this first one. We've got a few. Uh, this first one's from Lorenzo Semeniego at Z O S A M thirty two on Twitter. And he asks, in honor of Pluto, what is your favorite game in and or related to outer space? Well, shit. <laughs> I don't really know if I have one. Like, I, I guess he's not saying, like, uh, it has to be on the Vita, because he doesn't say that. But I try to stick with the Vita whenever we're talking about anything. Because, I mean, we are the Vita cast, so... Huh. I've got a Vita one and a non-Vita one, so come on, Tyler. Fuck up. <laughs> okay. Related to or in... I... Mm. Mm. I think I'm going to have to go with... I get... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you keep thinking there, nope, Tyler. Nope, Maybe I, I should. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's considered space, though. But I mean, you're jumping from planet to planet, fighting monsters. So I guess you're in space, but you're not actually battling in space. It's hell divers. Do you would you count that, Kyle? That's that's the Vita game I was gonna say. Yeah, oh, Tyler. <laughs> okay, well then there we go. Hell divers. That is a great game, and I reviewed it, so you should check out that review if you still haven't picked that game up. It's amazing. Kyle and I had a blast killing each other and trying to survive. We really need to jump back into that one, actually, Kyle. <laughs> we do, yes. That's a fun game to mess around, especially if you have friends to play with. Like You can just chat and kill aliens, and yeah. It's definitely better to play with friends, though, than randoms, because randoms can be terrible. <laughs> It's fun to play with friends and randoms, though, because then if randoms are assholes, you team up on them. <laughs> that is true. So, yeah. Kyle, we definitely need to play that game soon. Yes, we do, and it just got another expansion, so that's another reason to play that game. Yep. Oh, man. Anyways, yeah. So that's what you were going to say. What was the game that you were going to say that's not Vita-related? All right, my non-Vita-related game is Dead Space. That's one of my favorite games ever. It's awesome. And I would love another one on PS4 or Vita. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, EA is not Vita the one. greatest for doing that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Thanks, Lorenzo, for uh, your question. Next, we've got Nonskipo, which is at Nonskipo, N O N S C P O, and he's got two here. He says, thoughts on Criminal Girls 2 leak? Confirmation for Vita? Kyle, what are your thoughts? Um, yay. I, <laughs> Did you play the first I wasn't really, I wasn't really interested too much in the first one, just because the gameplay was tight, not because, oh no, it's Criminal Girls. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, they said they really haven't been, ch like, aren't changing much for the second one, so I probably won't be interested. What about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Uh, the first one I was slightly in interested in, but at the same time, every time I looked at something, I was like, ah, just it's not grabbing me enough to want to drop the money on it. And yeah, it's it's passed by, and I have literally no interest in grabbing it. So I mean, hey, if people enjoyed the first one, this is great news for them that a second one's coming. So 
it's always good news when more games and sequels are announced for the Vita. I'm I'm excited about that. It's not going to do anything for me personally, but hey. Yeah, you know there's somebody out there who wants this game. Yeah. All right. Well, he also ha- asks, when are you folks going to do a crossover episode with another Vita or portable podcast? Yeah, Kyle, when are we? You on that? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really thought about getting like another Vita or portable podcast host person on here, but I mean, it's a great idea. It's always nice to have a different perspective chatting with you, so... Depending on who it is, yes. <laughs> yeah, de- very much depending on that. Um, but yeah, I've messaged a couple developers, try to get on here, but those kind of fell through. So I've been slacking on that. But I definitely want to get another uh, interview scheduled soon, and possibly when I'm at PAX Prime, I might get some audio recorded there, and I can splice that into future episodes. So. Don't worry, you'll hear someone else's voice besides Kyle and mine's hopefully soon. <laughs> and Liam's drunk, you know, UK yeah. accent. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So yeah, thanks Nonskipo for your questions. Uh, is that all we got, Kyle? Uh, that's all I saw. Tyler, did you see any more than that? Uh, we checked our emails, right? Yes, I did. Well, then I guess that's it. Well, then there you go. All right. Well, let's jump into the next thing. Let's check this out, since we can't do Guess That Game, because Liam's a little... Mm. What are we going to check out, Kyle? (laughs) (laughs) All right, so there is a couple sales this week. We're not completely devoid of things. Um, And amongst those sales is a game that I've actually played, and that's Mortal Kombat. Um, If you don't have Mortal Kombat for Vita, it's a great fighting game on Vita. Um, It's... I believe five dollars for PlayStation Plus right now, and like eight dollars on sale. And I think it's originally about twenty, so quite a steep drop there. And if you're looking to get something cheap, have some change in your account, or just interested in fighting games enough that you'd want it, there you go. Well, all right. I can't really say much about that because I do not like fighting <laughs> games. So. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, all right, let's jump into the next thing, Kyle. We got this thread here, Digital Vita Games That Deserved Retail. What's this about? All right, so Tara Max, who is somebody who's actually written for the Vita Lounge before, a um, couple of reviews, I believe. I, I can't pick which ones out of my head right now, but I think there's a couple there. Um, posted on the forum, um, basically a thread which is asking... Which digital PS Vita games do you wish or think deserved a retail version? So for all you people who are physical collectors out there, what game do you wish was physical that is not? Um, And he's asking for three, but people were giving many more or many less than that. So feel free to chip in however you want if you uh, choose to join in there. But I thought that was a cool idea for a thread Um, and definitely something worth talking about because I could see, you know, I've seen it happen where people have like, oh, I wish this game was physical, and then like after the fact, it comes out. So you never know. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah. Sword Art Online, Hollow Fragment. Yeah. And. Um, Helldivers. <laughs> <laughs> Save some space on those updates. Or, on the actual game itself. Then I get all the <laughs> updates. <laughs> yeah. Or how about a physical edition of Helldivers with all the updates pre-installed? That would be nice, because sometimes they do that when they issue things like later, they have all the stuff installed. Yeah, there, there, there's my three top. I wish those were physical. <laughs> all right, so here's mine, and there's more than three. Um, I couldn't think of less than ten. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, Duke Nukem 3D Mega 10 Edition. It's small, but it's Duke Nukem in itself. Yeah. Uh, Guacamelee, which is an awesome game, and it definitely deserves a physical edition. Helldivers, as you said. Hotline Miami. Um, I, I just think for the type of game it is, it would sell, and people are always looking for more space. Um, Kick and Fennec. Um, a lot of games that are like that kids' games kind of thing. Not necessarily it's a kids' game, but like more all-ages games. Um would be better on on 
uh, card because, you know, then people and kids see them um, in stores and stuff like that. Um, I thought both Ollie Ollies deserved a physical card just because they're friggin' awesome. And it's one of those things that if you're do like going all physical and you don't have the memory card space, you'd want to have with you at all the time. Um, kind of cool. A double pack, Tyler? Somewhat like that, but like <laughs> just like an indie collection. It's like one cartridge that just has like 10 indie games on it. That would be cool. And I can see. Like some people like Devolver Digital putting one out because they have a lot of games that are indies. Yeah. So you know, you never know. But that's that is a cool idea, and there's a lot of different companies out there that could do it or team up and do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one is Senran Kagura Bon Appetit. Um, it's quite a big game, uh, and it's also something that you might not necessarily want to play all the time. So that one definitely deserves a cart. Um, and Soul Sacrifice Delta. Um, the first one got a cart. That one didn't over here. It's kind of an awkward thing. Yeah. Um, and as Tyler said, it's sort of a line hollow fragment. So there's there's tons, and that was ten. I believe that I pulled actually right off my Vita at the time. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, all right. Definitely uh, check out that thread and see if there's something that people missed or whatnot. Or something you want. Just voice your opinion. Yeah, that's what it's about. <laughs> that's right. Well, all right, that's all we got for this episode. That was episode 84. This is the Vita Cast. Let's get out of here, Kyle. Sounds like a plan, Tyler. So, if you got listener mail or comments, contact us via media services at thevitalounge.net. You can find everything we talked about at thevitalounge.net. The news, reviews, featured articles, store updates, podcast, a, com- a community forum, and a magazine, both digital and physical. You can support that said uh, magazine and get physical copies of the magazine via patreon.com slash thevitalounge. Um, didn't uh, issue three just go live for patrons? Yes, for patrons. If you're a patron and you're hearing this podcast... Go to the Patreon page, and you will be able to see Issue 3 with some pretty cool content in it from us, and something from Greg Miller, and something from, I believe, Gadget Girl Kylie, and yeah, all over the place. That is a (laughs) packed issue right there. They all are, Tyler, anymore. They all are. That's why we had to go to monthly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Ah, So yeah, head there, patreon.com slash the Vita Lounge, and get on that help us out and enjoy a very packed magazine uh we're all on twitter at the vita lounge i'm at mr ps vita reviews kyle is at teflon tactics we're on facebook just search the vita lounge go to youtube.com slash lounge play to check out our lounge plays the podcast and the bleh, the previews i blanked on the name <laughs> the previews of games for each month so uh, we just released uh, July's, so if you're curious what's coming out from what we know of, you should check that out. And, yeah, anything else we can think of posting up there, we will definitely release some new videos. Uh, the podcast is available on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, YouTube, and via the direct download on the site. So go subscribe to us on those and rate us. Let us know how we're doing. That is the VitaCast. Kyle? What? <laughs> I'm not wearing any pants anymore. God damn it, Tyler! No, Put on your pants. I'm kidding. I just want to mess with you. My pants are on. I'll send you a picture. If I ever meet you, Tyler, I'm stapling those pants to your body. <laughs> Ouch! That would be painful. And permanent, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're never seeing each other. That's what you think, Tyler. <laughs> Bye. Bye.